Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here, and it's time to check out Volibear and give our first impressions. We're going to be going over the star powers, starting decks, and then the upgrades he gets from leveling up. If you're enjoying all this Path of Champions content, definitely like and subscribe, and let's get into it. So his star powers for his first star power, when you slay a unit, summon a Sigil of the Storm. So you see that right here, these stack up, and then they reduce down the cost of your Titanic allies by one. And those Titanic allies are any allies that have either 8 power or 8 health or higher. So when you're killing units, now these could be your own units, or just a slay A unit, not necessarily an enemy unit. So when you kill a unit, you're going to be summoning one of these Sigils of the Storm. That's going to help get your Volibear out a bit cheaper. For your 2 star, you get that plus 1 starting mana. And then when you summon a Titanic ally, it strikes the weakest enemy. So essentially all of your Titanic allies... They're just getting Stalker's Blade for free. That is very, very nice and strong. Now, this is really a star power where it's not going to affect too many of your units, but when it does, it will be very impactful. And then for the three star, now when you slay a unit, you're summoning two Sigils of the Storm. So every time you kill a unit, you're reducing down the cost of your Volibear by two. This is pretty crazy. You just kill a couple units and you can get them out very, very quickly. Overall, I think these star powers work out quite well together and really help support Volibear since he is such an expensive but powerful champion. All right, let's take a look at that starting deck. All right, so we have the Unscarred Reaver. So one cost, zero three. When I survive damage, grant me three power. Not too bad. Would hope for something a little bit more aggressive early to try to get some early kills, but still not bad. Then we have the Ice Veil Archer. So two cost, three one. Play Frostbite an Enemy. That's okay, not crazy, but will help you delay the game a little bit as you're trying to get out your Volibear. Next we have Flash Freeze, three cost burst, Frostbite an enemy. Again, pretty straightforward, but will help you delay the game and play a little bit more defensively. I was hoping this would be a little bit more of a aggressive deck, trying to get those kills early to get out your Volibear, but these should be decent as well. Next we have Invocation of Thunder. So this is really nice, one of the cards that came with his launch glad they're adding this in here so draw one and summon a sigil of the storm this is a bit expensive but this will be very good if you get something like sorcery where round start you refill your spell mana or just any way to try to get this down a little bit cheaper so you can play this more regularly but great way to get a little bit of extra draw and summon another sigil of the storm to get your volibear down a little bit more next up we have val here's profit so three cost two three and then again when i'm summoned summon a sigil of the storm very strong effect nice that we can get more of these sigils without necessarily having to kill enemies decent card would be pretty crazy if we were able to get something like shadow totem on this so where you when you summon one you summon another copy of it that'd be pretty great to see but that's probably a little bit too powerful for the just in the champion level ups Next up, we have Avalanche. So four cost slow, deal two to all units. So this will be good for two reasons. For one, being able to damage your own Scarred Reaver will be nice for buffing up their damage. But if you kill your own units with this, it actually doesn't matter because then you'll still be summoning more Sigils of the Storm. So if you play this and it kills your units and the enemy units, that's actually not bad. That could be a clutch moment to actually getting a whole bunch of those Sigils to get your Volibear on the board. Then we have the Babbling Bjerg, when I'm summoned to draw a 5 plus power unit. So this will probably be able to grab your Volibear. So that's a nice way to have kind of some champion draw. And then 3-4, it's just kind of a solid unit. Then we have Tark has the Tribeless. So 5 cost, 5-8. So this will also get drawn by the Babbling Bjerg. Then attack, deal 1 to all battling units. Again, this will pair very well for your Unscarred Reaver. That damage increasing her power. But if this kills any of your units as well... Again, that's not too bad because you're summoning a Sigil. And then last up, we have Volibear. So 9 cost, 10, 10. Massive unit, but you will be getting that cost reduction. With that play effect of play, Relentless Storm three times, each one targeting a different random enemy or the enemy nexus if none. And you can see that right here, deal 4 to a unit, then if it's dead or gone, deal 2 to the enemy nexus instead. So doing some great damage there, and then his level up is round end, you've dealt 50 damage to the enemy. Then he goes to an 11-11, and now on attack, he also plays that Relentless Storm. And then him and all of his allies have Overwhelm, which is just, again, great. Essentially getting Troll King's Crown for free. Really strong effect there. For his champion spell, it's deal 4 to all units except Titanic allies, which is, again, fine if you kill your own units, since it'll give you some more sigils. 
One important thing to note is this unit right here will count as a Titanic unit because it has that eight health. So just make sure you don't play this on accident and take up all of your sigils that you were trying to save for Volibear. That is one thing you need to be mindful of. This will count as a Titanic unit as well. But getting this on the board earlier would also be pretty strong. Overall, I think it's a decent deck. There was one or two other cards that were released with Volibear that I was hoping to see in here. There was another Titanic unit that was like a seven cost, the Magma Worm, that when you played it, it summoned three of those Sigils of the Storm. Sad we don't see that here. I think that could have been a great addition. Definitely one to look out for when you're going through an adventure and going through those shops. All right, let's go through the champion level ups and see what we get. So first up, the Unscarred Reaver gets the Chain Vest. So whenever it takes damage, that's reduced down by one. That's actually going to be great for this unit. Being able to still take a little bit of damage, but not dying quite as often. This will really help you scale up a lot stronger. Then we have the Ice Veil Archer gets Locket of the Iron Slarry, so that barrier. That'll be pretty strong, letting you block or attack safely, hopefully getting a kill to summon a Sigil. Then the Prophet gets Studded Leather. Decent upgrade, making that just a little bit stronger. Next up, the Tribalist gets Great Club, so it gets that Overwhelm. Pretty solid addition. Next, Avalanche summons a Mighty Poro. That's pretty good, so this is going to summon a solid unit. Those Mighty Poros are a 3-3 Overwhelm, I believe is their stat line. So that'll make this spell a little bit better. Next we get Flash Freeze has Storm Calling. So manifest a Titanic unit and summon two Sigils of the Storm. That is actually crazy. So when you're playing a Flash Freeze, you're spending three mana, but then you're getting essentially two mana back for your Titanic units. That makes Flash Freeze really, really good. And that's going to be absolutely massive. This is also a great way to get more Titanic units because those are really some of the best units in the game. So this upgrade suddenly makes Flash Freeze absolutely amazing. Next up, Babbling Bjerg gets that Phage. So they go to a 5-6. Pretty good stat line, especially for a 4 cost. And next, Invocation of Thunder gets Tear of the Goddess. So this is actually really, really good. You don't necessarily have to look through in an adventure for some cost reduction. You're getting it right here. This going down to a one cost is massive. Being able to get that one draw and a Sigil of the Storm. So essentially you're playing this for free because that one mana you're spending is then being converted into a Sigil to reduce down the cost of your bigger units by one. This is a massive upgrade. Next up, Babbling Bjerg also gets a Skirmishing Saber. This will be pretty good to try to make sure you're getting those kills to get your Sigils of the Storm. And the next, Ice Veil Archer gets the Entrancing Lure, draw one. Decent upgrade. All right, so that is it. Overall, I think these upgrades are very, very strong. Max level Volibear is going to be an absolute monster. The starting deck is okay. I think it could be a little bit better, but honestly, that's pretty much all the starting decks. They don't want to make them too good, so you don't have any cards you're looking for during a run. I'm glad there was at least two of the cards that released with him, and I think the upgrades take this from being maybe like a mediocre deck to actually being very, very strong. The upgrades on both Flash Freeze and Invocation of Thunder are absolutely massive, and most of the other ones are just nice, decent upgrades. Really looking forward to Volibear. I'm glad they're finally bringing in a expensive champion in a way we're actually going to be able to play them. I think he's probably going to be hands down the best champion for Freljord, and overall a great addition to the game. All right, let me know what you think of him in the comments down below. I will be putting out leveling videos, him versus a soul guides, all of that. So if you want to see any of that, definitely like and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day.